Good morning and welcome back. Let me just sort out the logo, that's the wrong one. So, hopefully you're having a good day. And I'm ready for some card making. So, don't be afraid to say hi, ask any questions and I'm going to hop straight on into it. So, morning Deb. morning Thea. So today is going to be one of the last days that we're going to be streaming jointly on Twitch just because we found that it's just not working for us and we tend to just get silly comments on there instead. So we're going to take that away. Good morning Linda. Morning Sally Ann. So you'll still be able to watch us on Facebook and on YouTube and still catch up on both. So today we are doing a tent card. So first of all, let's quickly show you the card. So you can see that it's not your typical tent card. We have a top folding card over to the right and then we have a capacity fold to the left. And it's actually made of two pieces of card. So let's go back to overhead. So the pieces of card I'm using are 14 inches wide and they are roughly, very roughly, four and five eighths of an inch tall. So when we're looking at this way around, 14 inches this way four and five eighths this way. Now the actual dimensions of the card don't overly matter because I'm going to talk you through the actual idea behind how to work it up. So you can use any size card but what you want something is long and thin. So it could be that you take a piece of A3 card and chop that in half lengthwise if that makes sense. So let's say that was A3 you chop that in half and you've got your two pieces of card. If you want to do something a bit smaller then you could use A4 or if you have a top folding card blank you can use two of those. So our first piece of card we're going to work with we're going to score nice and easily at seven inches. So that means that we're scoring it directly in half and we're going to fold that over, decide which is the front and which is the back. Usually you'll find there's a leading edge. So leading edge to the front and we can just crease that card nice and neatly so you get a nice crisp fold. And this is where most tape cards will usually stop. Now usually what I find is, yep, yeah, it's brilliant when it's nothing on the front and it's perfectly flat card. But as you start to add more and more embellishments, you suddenly find your tank card starts doing this and it gets really annoying and keeps falling off the shelf. So to counteract that, we're going to put an extra bit on the side here. So let's bring in our next piece of card. And you are going to do exactly the same process. So we're going to score it down at seven inches. So halfway. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn over our card. And now we're going to create a gutter, which is going to be the expansion part of our card. So to allow our tank card to stand, we've got to have some distance in this bottom section. But obviously when we fold it flat to go in our envelope, we want it to collapse. So now you have to make some decisions and mourning the lease. You have to decide how much your capacity you want, how much you want to allow this element of your tank card to actually expand. So one way that you can do that is you can pop it on your scoreboard and you can go, right, okay, I'm going to want it to have 
a good couple of inches between these points here. So in which case then, you need to allow for that in your measurements here. So you're actually going to score it at six and eight if you're halfway set, or you're going to mo move outwards either side for that one inch of where your score line is. And good morning, Karen. How is it up in Scotland? It's certainly down and cold down here in England. <laughs> As you can tell, because I'm like, I've, I've got my big fluffy, fluffy jump on because it's so cold. So, let's go at six and eight. And the reason we turn it over is that we're actually going to have this card kind of do a little zigzag on this. Yep. I would agree with that, Karen, absolutely. <laughs> so, with your scoring, what you want to do is where you have a mountain score line, so that's where you can see that it's ridged upwards, that is going to go into the inside of the fold. So, like so. And we're going to score that down. Don't worry too much about front and back for that one because that's going to be inside. Then, with our two other folds, these are going to fold back this way towards you. So this is where you can start to think about which bit's going to be your back foot, to be honest. Chances of you actually being that most on this one? Not really. So we're going to give that nice crease down again. And the more that we crease these score lines, the more they're going to lay flat nicely as that hinge starts to work. And good morning, Mum. Are you having problems commenting by any chance? Say morning again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to fold that one in and we're going to crease that one down too. So now you should have a hinge that looks like this. Now what I would say is just work that a little bit. So what I'm using is a Lime Tree Craft Adaptable and it is, let me get it right, Ice Gold because it's got the golden shimmer in it. So if I try and get the light to just hit it there, it can just about take it. It's got goldy shimmer rather than a silvery shimmer. Or blue but anything like that where you've got a touch of shimmer is going to be good for this one because you're going to have that little bit of movement when you're actually opening the card okay so the next stage is to decide how much of an overlap you want so what I would say is try and hold everything as flat as possible just because if you let it pink open when you're doing this section, you can find that when you do come to fold it flat, it's not in the right place. So we're going to take this one step at a time. So I'm going to do the back join first, then fold it over and do the front join. So, another point. Decent for this one. Because you're going to have a little bit of tension between where your original tent card is going to go to where this piece is going to go, you're going to want to use something that is going to be a bit stronger. So you could use a red liner tape and just put a few dots of glue just to give that a little bit of wiggle room, especially if you're not used to doing these just yet. using is pretty clear which means that it's a bit difficult for you to see. I might just move the text actually just so that you can see that a little bit clearer. There you go. If I move that up there. At least. 
Now with that there, we're going to take up the back of our card. And I'm going to stick back to back. So I'm just going to overlap these slightly. So if you can see roughly where my tape is, if I bring that down a little bit, just a little. There's a line there where you can see my tape. And I'm going to literally bring it down just that little fraction more. straight as possible that one in. now next thing we need to decide is whether you are happy to have this section here at the same height or we can actually start to cut into it so that's fine let's just move this out of the way unfold the flap here. Now what I did in my original sample is that I actually angled this down here with a cut line and straight across the front. So that meant that we ended up with like a jewel tear effect. But the angle of this section here is entirely up to you. Just decide where you want this line to go. So you could have it down here if you wanted to. But somewhere around about there is probably best in terms of strength so about a third so i'm going to grab a ruler and let's go for so for those of you that want measurements in centimeters the height at the moment is 11.7 and I'm going to take it down to about nine. So you're going to want a pencil. Mark it nine. So let me just see if I can pull that that way. Okay. And then we're going to go mark it at nine up here. And good morning, Archangel. And hello, Carol. Oh, shame to see the notifications are taking a bit longer today. So now I'm going to go from that point that we've just marked up to here. I'm going to the inside of this little fold here. Now, you may find that you just need to tidy that up when you do your actual folding in. But from here, we can just do that. So you've got kind of line there. Yeah, it's Lime Tree Crafts. It's an adaptable and the colour is ice gold. I'm just going to join these dots to top, like so. So then we have a line there. Now, whatever we do on this front panel here could be shaped. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have that as a straight line. It's just staggered so that we've got two spaces that we can kind of decorate. So, for instance, if your theme for your card is a butterfly theme, you could have one butterfly that comes at the back or maybe even two and then one that comes out the front and we'll swap that around okay so now we just need to trim that up with some scissors and that's okay louise you're perfectly welcome to invite people or even share the video so long as wherever you're sharing it to it allows that in their group rules So for those of you that may have missed the beginning, this is two adaptables, but you can use any sort of long, thin card formats that you want. 
and you need two of them. We scored them in half and then on this left hand one we've added a gusset fold either side. And don't worry Delcy, that's absolutely fine. So with that trimmed we can now stick the front section. We're going to apply our tape to that edge there. When did you get the subtitles? I think that's a Facebook thing that's not done this way. It's not done through my software. Because I did look at, you know, if it could be clever enough to do that. Um, obviously because, you know, we want to be accessible these days. Facebook thing. We're also looking at um, going back and adding subtitles to some of the older videos, certainly the ones that we think are, are worth having as an archive. Um, yeah, is anybody else getting any interruption to the live stream? If you're having issues, if you just take your playback head back a few moments and then let it catch up, you're kind of creating a fake buffer then. So you tend to get a bit of a smoother stream. Yeah, usually I have them turned off. It's obviously having a bit of a, a refresh or something. So uh, I will go back into settings and have a look. Just because the Facebook ones <laughs> I don't tend to actually say what I'm actually saying. Okay, so we can seal that down. And then we have our card base. So if you still want to put a message inside, you can do. But usually what I say is put a nice panel on the back. It can also be a good way of putting like the old fashion style gift if you want to or you can add a little gift card insert inside but it avoids that issue of it going <laughs> um dear is it something that you have on other people's lives because if so it might be worth just doing a um broadband speed test Um, if you chat to Ian later, he has a, a site that he usually goes to to check the health of the actual broadband. No, just mine. That's weird. So strange. Well, I can assure you it's not something that, that we've done. <laughs> so, with that card now done, you could go ahead and make your own design if you want to. I'm going to carry on with a few chocolate rock stamps. Yeah, YouTube is a bit more stable for videos. So, let's pull in some stamps to work with. So I have Punky Sentiments and Punky Romance here. So I thought they would be a really good place to start. So we have a love stamp that I think would work really well as a panel over here. So let's pop that to one side. And we have a couple of options. We have a background stamp here, so I might use that one. So let's pull that one out. And on this side we have this lovely heart image. So if we look at our card design, I'm just going to offer this stamp up to it. You can see it's going to go out a little bit. Now that's fine. Just bear in mind envelope sizes as well. Um, if you go back, I did a video on making your own envelopes and working out sizes and things like that. So that one's worth going back to for this card. 
So I think that's going to look good about there. So if I put the love's going to go roughly there. I think that might be nice to stamp that directly onto the card. So the background is actually there. And then I'll cut this out with a separate piece of card so that we can do some colouring. Let's go from there. Okay. So I'm just going to grab a piece of stamping card. can do our main stamping separately which means that if we do make any mistakes nice and easy to fix them I'm glad to see that people are using YouTube as well so it is a platform that is one of us still doing and doing um, I know that in terms of content, I don't particularly fit their algorithm. But to be honest, it's not something that I'm really going to be that bothered about. <gasps> you receive the Tim Holtz house dice. <gasps> oh. Do I have them? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. They were on my wish list for Christmas. And... Uh, if I can still find somebody that has them, come payday, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they, they are fantastic dies. Um, in terms of glue tabs, yes, they usually do have the glue tabs included. So you just have like little score lines that just then um, fold around, a bit like the tiny village dies that I showed you before Christmas. So they should be nice and easy for you to use. Okay, let's get the right stamp. Always helps. And I'm going to go in this way. Oh, that way. And I'll go that way. I try and make the best use of the as possible, but I'm going to press that down. So if you're using the Tim Hawks platform, just make sure it says rubber on the actual platform at the top here. It's not very easy to see on the camera. I forgot to put the light on charge. My own fault. So I thought we could go for a few different colours today because usually with um, Steampunk I end up going to the same set of colours. So I'm going into the browns, um, salvage pattern, um, and what's the other one? My brain's gone blank. Speckled egg. <laughs> there you go. I get there eventually. Which make a really nice combination. So I thought I would try and change it up today. I'm going to do a bit of multicolored stamping. So I'm going to start off with picked raspberry. And I'm going to apply that into the center of the stamp. Let's just see if I can just get this camera a little bit better. There we go. So I'm just going to concentrate on this section here. Now, invariably, you are going to get some ink that goes outside of that area that you're focusing on. Don't worry about that at this stage. Just concentrate on inking up the stamp well. Being a solid stamp, you do find it takes a bit more time to actually ink it up. And doing a couple of impressions is also a very, really good idea. Just helps kind of avoid that speckled look. I'm going to grab a little blending sponge. I'm just going to take out the colour on the wings. So it's, going to, it's not going to remove it completely, but it's just going to blend it out a little. Just so it doesn't become this harsh line of all oh, that's where the ink pad went. Okay. And let's apply that one. And excuse the hands because they are having a really bad time of it this week. So 
So it's been a bit of a downer because it has started to get a little bit better. So you can see where we've got this mottling in here. That's where we can just use another impression just to help it out just a little. So I'm going to concentrate mainly on those areas when I'm re-inking this time. Put the lid back on my pan and just do any little bits of blending that you think you may need to do. So now with that done, I'm going to use, just use a bamboo cloth just to clean that ink up off my stamp. It doesn't take very much to clean off. Um, if you've got anything that's a little bit more stubborn, then you could just use some water. But for the most part, when you're working with good old rubber stamps, it doesn't take that much to clean them. go to the salvage pattern and I'm going to concentrate more on the wings. So again, I'm going to work just on these edges. And let's grab another sponge. Just soften and wipe this edge here just because there is so much on that lip section there. So tap that just a little. This is where you can start to use the point on your bending sponges. Okay. I'm just going to tap along that join and that edge there. on the top edge. Okay. And there we go, we've got something that's a little bit different. Now, if your stamp over stamps around the edges, don't worry about that because we're going to be cutting that out anyway. This one's a nice, simple design to fussy cut, so you don't have to use your scan cut, but if you want to, you can do. So, let's give that a wipe clean. another idea for you if you want to do some shading you can just use a water brush or a brush with some water and just soften that stamping but for me I'm quite happy with that as it is so I can actually cut that out and while I'm doing that that's going to allow that time to dry but you want to be a little bit careful so I'm just going to very quickly chop this out and set it to one side before I do my fussy cutting in a bit. Just thinking about how damp that ink is going to be. Just so we don't accidentally damage anything. And let's... It's cool, isn't it? It's, I, I really love the stamp. It's, it's a fun one. Especially if you're trying to do a, a Valentine for a guy. Because let's face it, they're not all florally and pretty. So now I'm going to go to my love. And I'm going to try and line this up at the edge of my card so it's nice and easy to cut a panel. 
So this time we're going to start off with our wild honey. And again, I'm just going to do some areas of the stem. Let's get the bending sponge and I'm just going to tap over the top. So all these stamps by Chocolate Brock and uh, grey rubber rather than the typical clear, which I find is actually better in, in the long term. Okay, so with that done, we can do our next colour. So always make sure that you're wiping between colours, even if you think that your stamp looks clean because there can be little sections around the edges that you just can't see from the angle that you're looking at. So get it a little clean. Now we can go to our picked raspberry. And this is where you're going to want to start comparing between your stamp and the image that you've already stamped. So you can see that there's an open area in the V here. We've got a bit missing on our E. There's room for colour on the L. And that's how we're going to build it up. So I'm going to go for where this E is here is going to be on this side here. Easy to get mixed up. So it's worth taking your time. And there's a little bit just in that D there. And a little bit on the L. So you can see I'm not applying lots and lots of ink. The reason being that you still want to leave room for some salvage pattern. So, pink pink sponge, there we go. We're going to do a little bit of tapping again. So you can see why when I'm doing these techniques that the stamp platform is just so necessary. We couldn't have dreamed of doing this before we had a, a platform without having a, a sort of jig to help us out. Okay. So if we were to leave that at this stage now, it would look like it wouldn't fit in with that kind of colouring. So by finally tying in with a little bit of patina, that's just going to help the two kind of blend together. So time to wipe. And we've got a bit missing of our B here. We could do a bit more of a definition there. And we can pop a little bit into our cogs and on the end of the E. Just in there. Down this side of the V. And a little bit in the cog. Like so. And again, we're going to blend that out. Now, if you get to this point and you think, I just need that pattern to just show a bit more, then we can repeat the colour in the same places before you clean your stamp. So this is only when you're going back in with the same colour. Okay. 
Yeah, that's the one that I was thinking, Deb, the um, new Paper Village set. There we go. So with that, we've got kind of a really funky rainbow look going on. So what I love about these inks is when you're doing something like this, the way they interact together as well. Um, because you can also mix your normal distress inks with your oxides this way because you're doing one stamp at a time you don't risk contaminating your ink pads as long as you make sure that you wipe between each colour so what I would say is and later on I will actually go back and just give that a little scrub just make sure that all that the oxide element rather than the colour and all the oxide and is off there just because the last thing you want to do is reintroduce that into your normal distress inks okay I'm trying to not be too girly girly but <laughs> let's now bring in our card base So if we look at the elements that we have at the moment, we've got our heart that's going to go over that way. We've got our love that's going to come into this panel here. So now I think it just needs sort of the blue and yellow in the background so that we're tying through those colours through all the elements. So I'm going to get my background dye. And line that up. Like so. There we go. And let's start with our wild honey again. Uh, it has a seven dies, yeah, that's the new one. Um there is a really useful video that is on I think it's on Tim's channel where Zoe had done the arrangement for how to put them onto magnets if you're in the Tim Holtz addicts group I think she's put it as a um, either a file on there or like a little um, note with how to do it so it's worth looking at that one coming to inking I'm trying to choose some nice random places so just ink that up now this is quite a big stamp so if you're working on a smaller card then just be mindful of where your stamps are actually going to go but for something like this where it's going to be all over anyway don't have to worry going to pop a bit more of that yellow on same places and then we can do the blending but then we should have some nice strong color so there are going to be some bits that i definitely want to keep all yellow some bits that i want to have blending into the green and some bits that i want to be all blue it magnetic sheets are perfect and then um she used i'm sure it was um some of the um like avriel type plastic envelopes but uh if you are into your tim holtz bits and pieces especially the dies the group is really good to join because it's full with like inspiration and lots of tips from Tim's DT. Um, I think if you go on Tim's website, there's a link for the makers as well. 
say maybe on Zevi's blog to almost undoubtedly actually. So back to this salvage pattern. And now we're gonna be mindful where we're going. So we want kind of this half of the clock cog. Say that carefully. <laughs> and we want the flowers. And we've got a little bit of the flower just on this inside bit here that's missing, so we can pop that one there. And a little bit of that cob just there. And a tiny bit of the sort of um, dandelion. come back in with the full strength pattern of where we kind of work out that we need it. So, just blend that around. You can also use your blending sponges just to get it any excess ink off the background of the stamp as well. Originally I intended to get it for Christmas and then, well, yeah. <laughs> I've had other plans, hey ho. So looking at this now, I'm thinking I could just do a little bit more just in this one because it's, it's such a fine image anyway. If you stamp it in the yellow, it can tend to get a little bit lost, which is also something to consider when you're choosing your colors. Now what you can find is that when you're doing this onto the shimmery surface is that it actually picks some of that ink back up from the first colour. So just go really careful when you're reapplying your ink. can do just peel that stamp off bear in mind we've still got all that excess ink on there just going to move that magnet over and it can very carefully just go on there like so and give that little stamp it's not going to be a perfect image it doesn't have to be. And again, you can just touch in a few areas, and this is going to be much paler than this image here, just because we kind of want it to fade out across the card. So again, just going to get a blending sponge. Now you can find again that it's going to pick up a little bit the blue. Just give your blending sponge a wipe before you use it on your next project. Uh, I'm trying to do watercolour painting of Andy. You'll have to show me. I, I, I want to see that. Because no doubt it'll look fabulous, Carol. Hoping for the book to be done by the end of this month, fingers crossed. It's kind of what I want to sit down and do this weekend, just so I can tick it off the to-do list. And then I will be moving on to the next one, which I've already started writing. It's like, ah. The writing bit to start with is initially the, the kind of easiest bit. 
that it takes the time with the doing the projects and photographing it and photographing it in such a way that it's clear what I'm doing as well. It's an interesting process, but uh, I've had some help with this one. So our lovely DT have been helping out. There we go. So we now have our background. Hopefully by now our bits are ready for us to trim out. So I'm just going to pop these back onto their backing sheets just because they are cling mounted. So you want to take just a little bit of care of the back of them so they retain that stickiness. If they do lose it at any point, what you can do is just give them a little wash. Usually it's just down to they've picked up some fluff from somewhere. Now, if you get to this point, you're thinking it really, you know, that white's going to stand out like a sore thumb, like I'm thinking at the moment. Then what you can do is just do a little bit of ink blending once you've done your fussy cutting. So do your fussy cutting first, then go back in with a little bit of ink blending. a little bit easier than trying to force it round to then go back that way. So not right here, I'm just gonna cut down that way. Just so I can take that piece like that. And the next bit should be a little bit easier. So if you're not used to fuzzy cutting, if you do yourself a little bit of a white border, then you can typically find it's a little bit easier. So especially when I'm brushing like this. Um, white border rather than trying to get up to that edge. Okay. Another good rule is to try and move your work and not your scissors. So as I'm going around the shape I try and get the work to go rather than moving this hand too much. And at the end of the day, it is a handmade card. So, if it's not perfect, it's yours. That's all that matters. Something that you've made. You've enjoyed the process. And the person that you're giving it to, well, I hope you think, oh, they made that for me. Okay, so now I'm looking at my background, working out my best position, and I'm probably going to go up out there. I might message you later, Deb, and uh, there's just a few bits and pieces that I haven't done files for yet. But uh, for those of you that are excited for the new book, there are going to be files to go with that will be on the Design with Vectors group because it's going to give you entry into that too. And then hopefully as we get more people in we can start to do a few more of the lessons. Okay. Sometimes what you can find, um, Carol, is they, will, they think, oh, it's like flesh colour. If you cut yourself on your, do it on your scanner cup, cut yourself a little square. Um, I mean little, like little, little. In the middle of a big piece of card. 
okay so if you're working from a photo for instance you can actually put that card over the photo and you can see the color in that section because sometimes what you can find is the color that you think it is is nothing like what it actually is and that color can then go all oh, right okay so that's my shadow color so when i put that over the top oh yeah that looks a lot, lot better than you're just thinking oh it's a uh, brush color there we go. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to use some 3D foam, I think, to mark that. Um, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Actually, just to keep it flat, I think I'm just going to go for some double sided. But there's nothing stopping you going for the 3D if you want to. It's not going to interfere in any way. The only thing to bear in mind is that when you start to stick any decorative items here, is that it's not going to stop that action of it opening and closing. That's good that you're framing your pictures, Carol, because that's one of the most important things to do, is to frame your work because just that action of putting it in a frame makes it look so much different. So much. So, uh, for those of you that are new, I'm um, working on a, a set of frames that I've, I've done for the hallway. So if you go back and look at the house images, those ones I've been framing, and they look pretty good in the hall so I've got a couple of extra spaces to fill so if there's enough interest I might do those on stream I might do it off stream so now we just need to do our panel here then if you want to do elements like you've got the dandelion clock which we have in our background here then you could for instance stamp that and cut that out up there It's really annoying that I can't see replies, so I will go back and check out replies after. But if you do things as new comments, I can see them, but if they're replies, I can't, which is really annoying. So, I miss half conversation. I only see the starting point. <laughs> so, I'm just going to use my trimmer. Thank you. <laughs> another project later so I'm busy sample making at the moment which is why the books had to take a bit of a, a backward step just for now but hopefully this weekend I can tackle a few bits and I might get DT to help with a few too okay just to make that look a little bit more finished is if we map that onto some contrasting card so I've started keeping stashes of colour card around my desk in the chance that usually one of them will fit in and blend nicely so let's have a so we've got pink I think that's gonna be too light we have got this really strong yellow which will tie into the stronger yellow on our card so we can use that there we go so let me just pop those back down there for a moment so if you have some old card swatches, things like that, I tend to reuse them into the backgrounds of cards.
tend to also try and have white card pre-cut to different card shapes so for instance i might have a6 a5 so i can just literally do coppers and then literally apply them onto card blanks especially if i'm doing things like samples for tv where they need to be a little bit stronger a little bit more resilient because of posting them Just use my camera just to tidy that up. I tend to keep like a pile of offcuts underneath my trimmer so if I need to like some little bits for sentence strips and that I have somewhere I can go to and just do that. So we have a couple of options. You can put your little sentiment, or well, not so little, up here so that it actually sits above our cut line or you can bring it down so it sits into it. So it all depends on the other elements that you have to actually build up that section there. You've never watercolored a portrait before. Oh, <laughs> give allow yourself plenty of time. So, although watercolor is really quick to do in the sense that it dries really quick, um, it can. If you rush yourself too much, you can apply paint before it, you you're sort of dry enough to do that next layer. So, just take your time. I've been watching some really good portrait artists um, working in watercolour and it's interesting to see how different their approaches are. So some will literally try and do a photorealistic representation like straight off the bat and it's like oh no 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 I'll, I'll, I'll take my time and build up the layers. case of what you want to do in this area here however as it's now 12 o'clock I'm going to leave you for today and basically I will follow the same process for all the design elements yeah it's good to see watercolor challenge back um, I try and watch it on catch up though because Ian likes watching these things too <laughs> Which is good. Um, did anybody see the program on BC4 about Turner and his use of watercolour? No, I will have to go back and watch that one because I do love Turner's work. Um, and if you ever get a chance to go down to London and see his work in the flesh, then I would highly recommend that you do so. Um, there are some absolutely stunning pieces that you can see. And it's it's so interesting when we see these works of art that often we'll see in print um, or on Pinterest, dare I say, or other sources. But then when you see them in the flesh and you can actually get up close to them, you can see so much more about how they're actually made. Yes, great pottery and throw down to that too, which again is a good one just for having a different source of inspiration. So if anybody's struggling with your mojo out there, try and take in something that is creative, but not what you're actually wanting to be creative with. And sometimes a process in that could trigger a thought in what you do. So it could be a glaze effect in pottery, 
makes you think, oh, I can go and try that with alcohol inks, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I am going to be available for questions this afternoon, and I will try and keep an eye on messages. So if you do have any questions, you can pop them on a message to me, or to Planner Craft, or you can message me on Instagram too. Um, I tend to pick up Instagram a lot more than I do Facebook if I can have it. <laughs> so take care, have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you on Tuesday at 11am. Take care for now.